Hi, I'm Irving. Welcome to Captain Model. And now, back to Shazam. What are we supposed to find with this gadget? Pirates treasure, doubloons, who knows, anything metal. Bottle caps, soda cans, fish that ingested mercury. You can find a lot of things with one of those. Let's go dig up that money. That's what we're here for. Where'd you hide it? Up the beach, where nobody'd ever find it. You can even find stolen money if you get there before they do. Billy is looking at the water with binoculars, trying to spot sharks. Mentor is so afraid of sharks, he won't even look. He doesn't realize land shark isn't a real thing. Oh, no, it's all right. I'm quite able to maneuver this thing myself. Uh, may I use your binoculars for just a moment, please? Yes, certainly. Ah, here they are. Kate and Laura. Tagalongs, as usual. Why they brought that metal detector. She's Sister Mary Catherine, and she's supervising a herd of girls on a field trip. Oh, and that's Tut. It's a noisy little bird. Actually, it belongs to a friend of mine, Andrea Thomas. She's a teacher. Tut's only with us for the day. Why is he with you at all? And Tut's trying to tell you no introduction is necessary. They know him better than you do. Oh, uh, uh, why don't you uh, use those to keep an eye on your students? Uh, we'll get them from you later. Well, thank you very much. You can also yell at them if you use that boom mic that's waving over your head. And I suggest you do it soon because the metal detector has done its job. Abby, what's inside? Money! Grand City Bank. In the newspaper. I remember. I read it about a week ago. The Grand City Bank was robbed. Stolen money. What should we do? Turn it over to the police, I guess. But Kate doesn't want to let it go. She's sorely tempted to keep it, or at least give it to someone who really needs it. Sister Mary, that's perfect. We'll give it to Sister Mary, secretly. She could really use this. You're right. If she had this, she could have an operation, maybe even walk again. They stuff the money in Kate's pack and bury the box again. Why not? It's not going to be like stealing, going to a worthy cause. Those other guys stole it, they're just worthying it. Not surprisingly, Billy gets a call from the elders. Billy, some people believe that a dishonest action can be covered by a good deed. What do you mean? Even the best intentions in the world never work out when there is a lie behind them. Well, why are you telling me this? You will understand soon enough. In the case of Kate and Laura, there's a good chance it really won't work out. There it is. Look! Empty. Somebody beat us to it. But how? Nobody else knew but me. They knew where that money was. They must have been the ones who put it there. Yeah, and they're going to want it back. Or in this case, a money detector, and it worked. The girls hide the pack in those rocks and grab the first mode of escape that they see. Let them go. Let's find a knapsack. Maybe they hit it back there. The motor won't start, so they're stranded out there. But it gets worse. A shark that small isn't likely to attack the boat. Sit still and be quiet. It'll inspect this weird thing, get bored, and go away. Remember, you're in the boat. He's not. Using Billy's binoculars, Sister Mary sees what's happening. The girls are in such a panic, they're about to fall out of the boat and give the shark a smorgasbord. Sister Mary speeds over to the motorhome. Mentor goes inside to call the lifeguards while Billy runs down a path out of sight. How's he going to do this? Most sharks aren't aggressive. I've encountered a couple of different kinds in my diving, and mostly they just want to be left alone. 
Here in Puget Sound, my wife encountered one called a six gill, and even though it was bigger than she was, all it did was swim around her and let her pet it. That particular shark is a scavenger, and it would only attack if you did something to hurt it. Most sharks are like that. If one is circling your boat, he's not hungry, he's curious. Be boring and he'll go find something more interesting. Those girls were way too interesting. For the rest of their lives, Kate and Laura couldn't stop telling the story of how Captain Motorboat saved them. How do we find our money with Captain Marvel around? Just wait. You'll go away. Those girls will come back too. Wait and see. They sat there waiting for five days. When they passed out from hunger, the girls slipped up and got the money. The following year, Sister Mary was drafted by the WNBA. I feel terrible lying to Captain Marvel and Sister Mary like this. But we couldn't tell them the truth. If we have to tell lies, remember, we're doing it for Sister Mary. Now we can sneak down there and get back before she knows we're gone. But we promised we'd stay here. But we have to get the money. Have you thought about how you intend to give this to Sister Mary? Sorry, girls. Bank's closed. Never mind. Kate! Laura! Oh, we all know each other, huh? What's this about? They stole some money. Never mind that. You're all coming with us. Oh, just a minute. Let's go, friend. You stole that money. You're robbers. That's what you are. You're robbers. While they're getting annoyed at him for stating the obvious, Tut is learning a new word. Tut! Robbers, robbers, I need ISIS touch. Captain Marvel is described as a defender of justice and foe of evil, but for most of the run of the show, he hasn't really dealt with quote unquote evil, as in bad people doing evil things. This third season seems to be doing a bit more of that, rather than Billy and Mentor finding people in difficult situations and helping them. These are some bad dudes, and we don't know what they have in mind for the girls and Mentor. We do know it probably won't be very nice. What they don't know is they kidnap someone who's a lot smarter than they are. Come in. Come in. Doesn't Tut usually use the window? Tut, you're supposed to be with Sister Mary. What are you doing here? Robbers, robbers, blah. There's trouble? Show me, Tut. Before Billy knows it, Isis is landing beside him. Mentor and two girls are missing. They were here before, but that was hours ago. You can see into the past. Tell me what happened to them. Oh, time turn back, and then hold fast, and let me see into the past. <laughs> Not exactly the same incantation she used on her own show, but she's allowed a little variation. She sees the situation in her gym, Billy Shazams, and they're off to the rescue. It's Mentors. He must have dropped this for us to see. He's probably inside. I have an idea. Keeper of the wind, swirling oar, smoke those robbers out the door. I'm gonna smoke those robbers right out the door. I'm gonna smoke those robbers right out the door. Let's get the girls. Yeah, we'll write Mentor off as an acceptable loss. They're taking Mentor. You only just noticed he wasn't there? Oh, mountain wind and northwest breeze left Mentor safe above the trees. No, I don't believe it. Mentor isn't convinced about the safe part, but he doesn't have much say in the matter. The bad guys run into a tunnel. Isis Chance and Captain Marvel does something with a big stick. 
Anyway, here's the result. He's literally pulling the ground out from under them. I find myself wishing Batman had done something like this. The girls learned that if you have to lie for your cause, it's not a good cause. It might seem like it is, such as showing compassion for Sister Mary. But if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me say, if you have to lie to support your position, your position sucks. Get a better one. I stand by that. And now I think the girls do too. The way he's going, by next week, Tutton will know English well enough to tell us he does too. I'll see you next time on Captain Model Marvel. Shazam. Billy and the Tutlings, whatever.